All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We are finally back to the next series, and it's a 1v1 between Sin Q of eHome and RNG Setsu. And uh, Danok, it's always good to have you back, my man. It's going to be a Void Spirit versus Wind Ranger matchup, apparently, this time. I can just hear Slack screaming out in pain because of this uh, <laughs> this Wind Ranger pick. I suppose it's the sort of thing that, you know, he did end up his video, he finalized it by saying, you know, there's the one place that you can maybe run it, it's mid. And considering you don't need to worry about, you know, late game scaling or anything like that, getting ganked from other sides of the map, it's an alright mid hero. That was... Uh, I don't know why he would even go back on what he was saying the whole time. Wind Ranger's garbage. Absolute garbage to your hero. Never should have been picked. Well, it Sin might not Q have been their choice. Yet. Well, I mean, it's not Sinq's choice. Prepare for battle. Poor guy. It's the community's choice. The community's been rather trolly about these picks. And you know what? I, I think the community missed something. Now, either I'm missing it or, or, or they are. Why have we not seen FY Tusk versus an Axe? I thought that would be quite entertaining. You know. That would be pretty high. But uh, I, I don't believe it was done. Seems like FY is getting chosen a fair amount when LGD have their games to be the one that's uh, going up in this matchup. Well, I mean, it's FY. Like, yeah. He's, he's, it's F, what do you say about FY? He's, he's, the, he's the main man in China. FY God, exactly. Now, for the people that aren't aware of what this is and why it's going on, uh, would you like to explain? You know, Dan, I'd love to, but I, I do love listening to that, that, uh, that voice of yours. <laughs> you lazy piece. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> <laughs> the way that this works is normally in a professional game of Dota, the way that they choose who gets to have the pick priority, so whether they have first or second pick in the draft, or which side that they're playing on, Radiant or Dire, is just by using the in-game option to flip a coin. But they said, screw it, let's do a 1v1 mid instead, and uh, let's skill decide instead of luck, or maybe a little bit of luck still involved. So essentially, with this one, it is after 10 minutes, the uh, person that's either first to destroy a tower, first to get to two kills, um, and then there's a bunch of other factors involved. But it's basically, win the 1v1 mid matchup, and then your team gets that first pick priority. That's the important thing. You see, if I explained it, I would have just said, look, it's a 1v1. Uh, I don't know what happens. Something happens afterwards. It's just a 1v1. That's what I would have said. So thank you for that, Danog. I'm uh, right. glad you've broken it down for the viewers that weren't aware of what's happening. Still, the, the 1v1 ha matchup has started. Now, as tradition implies between you and I, we who has the better matchup here? Hmm... Well, you hate the Wind Ranger, so you're just I going do. to say the Void Spirit does. Absolutely. So I'm going to troll you and say, let's go Wind Ranger. <laughs> Such a bad hero. Like, I love playing against Wind Ranger, because I know I'm going to win. But when you, when your teammate picks it up, it's just really bad. Do you need me to check your Dota buff? Your recent? You may. I, I have had Wind Ranger games in the past. I'm not going to hide it. I'm, I'm not bandwagoning, however. I've learnt from my mistakes, sir. Okay. I was a sinner really back in the day. Just back in the day? Just, well, we'll, uh, we'll avoid that conversation for now. Setsu, currently 7 and 5, Sinq 3 and 0. Oh. So, Setsu is currently in the lead, and I dare say it's based off the fact that he has a very high base damage and he has resonant pulse. Yeah, oh, God, <laughs> even getting those sorts of denies. <laughs> I mean, this goes back all the way to TI1, where Na'Vi, I remember seeing an interview with Dendi, is like, yeah, we literally just picked heroes that had the best attack animations because we had no idea uh, what we were doing. And so it's kind of a similar sort of thing. You know, Resonant Pulse is instant. You're able to just get these... Uh... Ooh. Ooh, that's a big one. That's a big win, but Sinq is about to die, and he does! <laughs> <laughs> all right, so apparently it was a big win, just not for Sinq. Zetsu does win out. What a what a value one v one. All right, R RNG, they're gonna take that uh, that priority. Will they go for first pick? Will they go for second pick? It's very rare that you see a team pick side instead of the uh, the draft order for themselves. And uh, we'll see if they can set the trend for this entire series. 
with that, it is MLP Dota and Danok Dota. Uh, we should be back very soon. I, I hope there's no more delays between the series. It, we should be back pretty soon for that first game of this best of three. See you then. Against this Beastmaster, like it, it seems like those balls are going to prove to be a little too much. Um, it depends. Like it's going to be heavily up to the bane. You're just going to be, and it's something you really don't want to do. But if you're laning with the TB against the Beastmaster, just using your brain sap, honestly, on those boars to start to hit them down. They give a good amount of experience if you're able to take them out. And uh, yeah, it's going to be tough for the TB to deal with the poison stacks if not. We hope make their final ban. It does appear that RNG is still missing their own mid. Uh, you know, arguably it is going to be the Ember Spirit mid coming out from E-Home, but you never really know. Uh, I believe there has been some support Ember Spirits going around. So that would be a bit weird to see, but it could happen. RNG's turn to ban. Go for the Lena ban. Alright, so how are we going to round out this draft for both of them? Surprisingly on Ehome, they've left their... Unless they're going to throw this Ember Spirit into a support role, but I'm I'm not feeling that. Not at all. They could Neither still get I. a Snapfire. On the side of RNG or on the side of Ehome? Ehome. I mean Ehome, because right. It yeah. deals with the egg. You can cookie people out of the arena. And you can just long-range siege this Terror Blade if he's just trying to stand there and just right-click the hell out of you. It does seem like a value pick. Five seconds remaining. RNG? What do they go mid, though? Like, they know the matchup's probably going to be the Ember, and they... Okay, they go with the Void Spirit. We see this a lot. When a team's just going to ban the Void Spirit, that's what I want to know. Oh! Okay. So, who's mid? Is this a pause for? No, it's a, uh, it's, a po it's a support Ember. Yeah. I mean, they've given him some form of initiation with this Grimstroke, with the Inkswell, which is nice. I'm just a little bit worried about how they're going to deal with this egg a little bit, and how they're going to get on the back lines. It seems as though they're going to put their faith into the uh, into the troll to to take care of the egg. But even then, like in in the middle of a team fight, you know the troll doesn't necessarily have options to just switch targets like that. Might be a little bit rough. We will go into it very very soon. Game number one of this best of three series, and I like you know I'd love to ask you, Danog, who has the better draft? Don't do this to me. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing it, son. Because I predicted the first two picks, I'm going to go with RNG. Okay. So you're biased. That's fair. Yes. I was also biased in the previous ones. That's fine. By the way, what Phoenix cosmetic is that? Because that looks amazing. Good question. Looks like, like some Harry Potter stuff, like forks from Harry Potter. <laughs> Yeah, but it, it looks like the only, like, it's the only Phoenix cosmetic that actually makes it look somewhat like a Phoenix. Like, I never liked the face of Phoenix in Dota 2. Mm. What do you reckon it looks like when it's just standard Phoenix? I don't know. It's like some, like, robotic Phoenix, right? Like, it just looks weird. Robo Phoenix? Robo Phoenix, right. Man, Beastmaster looks like some kind of Majora's Mask style thing. That is true, he definitely does. Still, game one, we go into it. Crest of the Vermilion Crucible is the uh, the headpiece for the Phoenix. How expensive is that? I wonder. If you I have to it's... ask, you can't afford it. Okay, alright, alright. The mid, Kunkka, last pick. Interesting coming out from Ehome. We weren't really expecting it. That does throw the Ember in the pause 4 position. That does concern me quite a lot, though, for Ehome. I, I haven't personally seen much of the support Ember. 
I can't imagine it's that good, though. Well, the thing is, it doesn't really feel like any of RNG's picks were in direct response to it, as if, oh, we're going to counter this mid by picking X. So maybe they were trying to mind game, but just got caught out with what they were trying to do, and they were like, well, that's what we drafted for, so I guess we got to stick with it. I think you're even going for the level one slight, which I suppose is standard, right? Like, you can harass with that, if you want to call it that. Sure. He's gone the Blightstone as well, so it's going to be hitting for that a little bit more. Okay. So the other uh, banner is it will be a 2 for 2 trade. Begins. Top ones go to RNG, bottom will go to the side of E-Home. Faith Beyond already trying to be a bit aggressive here down the bot lane. He's got the double balls up and Monet going to try and fight him back a little bit and they don't manage to find that ball. Monet now going to cop even more damage on the Terra Blade. And if you're going to block, you're going to you're going to really pay for it. Faith Beyond, he just wants to block himself. Sin Q going to rotate over as well. And they might even run an aggressive tri lane up against this Terra Blade Bane combo. Yeah, why not? I mean, oh, you can see Monet's TPing out. I wonder if they caught that with the uh, vision that's coming through there. Could be very problematic for Monet, especially if he dies very soon. They are going to actually TP out the Grimstroke. So Y is going to go up to the top lane. He's going to help out Sila, who really shouldn't have a very good time if he was left by himself up against September's Phoenix. Yeah, I'm sure they were hoping that they could maybe keep them bot until they're level 2, because then you've got obviously that Inkswell combo, you've got the Searing Chains and uh, Slide of Fist combo, but yeah, you, you don't want to do that at the expense oh, of your troll, thank you. Ooh, Sink you, he does manage to get away. Committing that salve, just barely surviving. Super's not going to let him go, though. He has a brain sap, and he does get it. Huge first blood for RNG is they get the kill, and they get that regen out of the Ember. Yeah, getting converted from pure damage over to magical, but that little bit of a damage buff to it means that still, level 1, it's plenty to be able to finish him off. So we have a quick look over to the mid lane. Nothing to say up against Setsu on the uh, on the Kunkka versus the Void Spirit. I don't get to see this matchup very often. I imagine it does favor the Kunkka a little bit. But am I right in saying that? Like, is it is it Void Spirit favored by any chance? It's an alright Kunkka matchup because you want to be able to go things like the braces, for example. Now, you know, strength obviously doesn't passively provide that magic resistance anymore, but the braces still do. And a lot of Void Spirit's damage, especially early on, is still going to be that magic damage. So you're able to deal with that quite easily. And uh, as well, just with your Tidebringer, you're able to deal with the... Uh, oh, nice little dodge there. Uh, you're able to deal with the Resonant Pulse uh, damage sustain, I suppose you could call it, because it's all physical damage that it sustains against, and then it becomes a lot harder for you to just do this, stand in the middle of creep waves and contest. Yeah, nothing to say, he's uh, taking quite a lot from Setsu and just doesn't really mind it. He'll salve up a little bit, he'll be fine. Top lane, and Inkswell is there by Y onto September on the Phoenix, but Y doesn't have anything to capitalize with, so he will just back out. September gonna be disruptive with that creep pool, and Asala has a huge wave coming his way anyway. It's not too big of a deal. Well, it was a huge wave. What are these dinosaur cosmetics as well on the Beastmaster? Have you seen them before? Wasn't that the new chest that came out recently? I think I it was. I, I wait for TI most of the time, and then, <laughs> I'm with then you. my bank account takes the hit. <laughs> Top lane, Sila. Going to be in a bit of trouble. Flywind won't have a spear. Doesn't even have the mana for it. and They can't really capitalize. So Silent does manage to get a salve off. But he has taken a hit in farming, Silent. He's 15 and 1 right now. Just 4 CS behind the Terror Blade. But looks like Flywind and September have been rather disruptive up against this troll. Nothing to say, he's doing really well on this mid side, constantly disrupting all of the healing salves that are coming through. Setsu is again just trying to stay in the middle of these uh, creep waves, but it's getting denied off pretty quickly and there's a little bit of a net worth lead starting to build up for him. September secures a haste rune for himself. 
Second Neither. bracer finished up by nothing to say. That's big. It's like at that point, it's like you've basically got zero chance of killing this Conkanel by yourself in the mid lane. Like he's just way too tanky and has way too much magic, uh, magic defense. Just yep. no way it's happening. Too much magic defense. You can see he's maxing out the Tidebringer, so all that physical damage is going to be uh, affecting this Void Spirit's avail availability to contest. You know, three points in the pulse is nice, but Tidebringer's better. Yeah. Forces him all the way back to the base, not having picked up his bottle just yet. That's a slow nice. walk. Banneroon's up, nice. though. September he, does uh, grab he actually, his... He actually just torrented this uh, this creep wave underneath uh, on the Observer Ward on his side, so gets the stack off for himself. Nicely done. Oh, that you can do that. That's right. You, you can actually torrent and get the stacks off and... There was that yep. whole crazy thing with Kunkka, right? Where people were, uh, I believe it was Admiral Bulldog was kept stacking Ancients, right? He just yep. kept going. Unlimited stacks. Yeah, if they don't need to run, they're just up in the air. That's uh, that's all you need. Good to see nothing to say really uh, optimizing that. The timing can be a little bit tricky with that torrent, uh, with that torrent stacking, but he gets it. Setsu having a really rough time here. You can see... One Tidebringer, not enough to break the Resonant Pulse, but two, and uh, he's just done, and you can't stand in the middle of the Creep Wave anymore. Faith Beyond's gonna go down. Did he self? Uh, I believe so. While well, he had a Phoenix Dot on him. Yeah, that's a, that's a huge mistake. Just wasting that 100 gold and... Oh. I mean, he can TP his way back down Bob, but you don't want to be losing gold like that, and that's gonna open up the lane now for Mane to just keep freely farming up on this terribly. It will. Um, I think they're still doing fine, though, overall. He's getting a healthy amount of farm for himself. He's already ahead of the Void Spirit there. Pretty poor on the supports, though, on uh, Ehome's side, relative to RNG. You know how it is, Daniel. Supports don't matter, you know? Just... How dare you? <laughs> Clear, <water>. <laughs> Faith needs all the farm. Get the Necro one book pretty darn soon. Actually, is opting to uh, to skip the Helm of the Dominator, which is pretty interesting. Y you know, usually you do see that out of Beastmasters. They do go for the Helm of the Dom first. Poor Setsu. He's going to really have to get a lot of help from his supports to make sure he's securing these bounty runes, because you're just not able to stand in this lane otherwise. You're just going to be going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth to base. And uh, I don't think he's ready to try and make any sort of aggressive rotations just yet. Certainly not. Does at least secure the range creep for himself, but... Oh. Baits out the Dissimilate. And nothing to say. He is going to out-level him now by one. So, level seven versus level eight. Bot lane September falling very low, but Sing could not finish him off thanks to the Fire Spirit attack slow. But it looks like they are set up now to push in this bottom team one tower. And RNG, they fortify. I don't really know if they're going to be here in time to really defend this tower from Faith Beyond. Yeah, that's the real strength with these few creeps as well. He's getting the solo experience, so hitting up onto his level 6. Bane. Top dead. lane. Boat flies out. Yeah, Super has no chance. Or maybe he does stick charge. No, nothing to say. Hits way too hard. This is uh, this is where it gets a bit scary, right? Like Ehome, they can really start to snowball now, especially with these items up on Faith Beyond. Yeah, Necro Book coming in handy. And uh, yeah, you can't just leave this uh, bottom lane completely uncontested. Wisely, September here. He's going to rotate down. Start to push it out a little bit and get some of that really valuable experience. And Faith won't try. That's the great thing about these heroes like the Phoenix. He probably doesn't do it as better as some ones like the Wyvern, for example, but you can stay at a relatively safe range. And you might not stop the tower being taken, but you can slow it down significantly, which is going to seriously hinder uh, Ehome's effectiveness with their draft.
They're going to try again. Start forcing down that T1. Faith Bian. He's going to have a look for September. Does throw the Hawk out, but doesn't actually scout out the Phoenix. It was just off. But September looks like he's just going to chill out. He's not really going to try for anything here, surely. Could be. Yeah, slowing it down. The top T one's not even being affected for E home. Like, there's nobody harassing that. But they are starting to rotate. Still, Sunray TP from the Phoenix. He'll be fine. And they are now in a position. Mane does rotate tops. So they do eventually get there to find that T one trade. Yeah, that's the thing. That's what a delay does. It means that you can't immediately react to that. You can't, for example, contest the uh, the top outpost. You're still going to get a couple of bounties for yourself. So really valuable play coming from Phoenix there. Interesting thing to note. Uh, having a look at Sylar on the troll, he appears to be going for a Battle Fury build. I always question I this with trolls. Like, is this the right way to go? I don't mind it as much anymore because it is much more of a fighting style of build. Although you're not going up against... I mean, it can reasonably deal with the TB illusions, but you don't want to really be right there in the thick of it to deal with them. Got a bit of a power spike here with nothing to say. He's hit up onto his level 10, he's got his phase boots, he's got his couple of braces. And, uh, yeah, that plus 40 damage is insane at this stage of the game. Oh, it sure is. They'll likely get the deny off there onto this tower. Oh, they did not. Faith Beyond, he got it with the boar, and now Arena of Blood and Raw flying out. They want that Void Spirit. Setsu does go down to the damage of Faith Beyond, and Flywin will also end up going down on the Mars. And they're looking for more. They know Super's around here somewhere, but it looks like Super is too far out now. The Sinku is still chasing, but no, he just places a ward, leave it be. Looking all right. It's just about the early game's going about as well as you would hope for on uh, Ehome's side. It's just how are they going to actually transition that? Are they going to be able to get up onto the high ground? Are they going to be able to get this battle fury and be this team fight presence against the TB? We're taking map control. Like maybe Mane would won't even have the chance to really be that farmed up to uh to be as effective as he needs to be. Perhaps. Ehome still have a lot of work to do. And you're not completely gimped either by going for this uh, Battle Fury build anymore. You can still go the Broadsword. It's plus 16 damage instead of waiting for that uh, extra 1200 gold to finish the Demon Edge. So you can gradually build up into it rather than just having an all or nothing play. Super risky as well if the enemy team's got a ganking lineup. And then you get picked off and all your unreliable gold just goes away. Oh, top lane rotation, Y, is going to be the target of this gank. It is a three-man rotation for this support Grimstroke. They do end up picking it up. It's the only one they could find. I believe they were looking for the Ember, but Sinq had already, already Remnant TP out, so... A bit of bad luck for them on the side of RNG. Troll's happy for that sort of trade to happen. Getting four different heroes' attention. Sure, they'll lose an outpost, but really it's not going to matter for the next seven minutes. And we just saw the Phoenix TP up to that outpost right now, so absolutely no way he's going to contest this bottom side. And, uh, again, Sila, he's having free reign here of this jungle. I'm surprised by this. Like, are RNG really going to be able to set up for a tier 2 push right now? Like, it doesn't feel like they can. They don't have the greatest pushing lineup. Like, sure, Monet's alright. But he's just keen to keep farming right now. He wants that Manta style so that he can get rid of, I suppose, the Phantom's Embrace is the big thing that he wants to be able to get out of. The Searing Chains, the Blind. It's a pretty value pickup, even for someone like TB who already really enjoys it. This yeah. Deep Observer Ward's going to scout him out as well so they know exactly where Monet is. If they want to try and get aggressive onto him, they can. And there's that Shadow Blade on the Conqueror as well, so maybe trying to go for a pick-off. He's got his team backing him up. They could definitely try for this. Oh. Q. Gonna spot smoke out the Illusion. Up. Smoked on up, Smoko. <laughs> They're gonna go 
into the east side jungles, and if they're going to run straight into super. Do RNG go for this team fight? Definitely not. They let the pause 5 die. Faith Beyond, he'll look for another target with that Primal Roar. In fact, Sin Q, he's already far forward, and he found Flywood and Monet. He's just not really uh, setting he's alarms off. the ward now. Uh-oh. Doesn't go for the chains on the two, but rather they aim the Phoenix instead. Interesting play. X, Torrent, both going to be onto Flywood. Flywood just going to have to tank that damage, but he does drop the arena. So he can't do anything in it. Looks like he is just trying to protect Monet from getting picked off. And that does actually force the buyback from September. It's a nice little thing that I never thought of, is that Ember Spirit, one of those few heroes, at least once he's level 6, that can just get out of the uh, Mars Ultimate. Oh, that that is very true. It. Bat Rider can fly over it. I don't think Marana can leap over it, but uh, he's definitely in rare company. So now E-Home. They hold a 4k lead. Silas got his Battle Fury on the way. Decent timing at 15 minutes. Yeah. H how concerned would you say you are for RNG? Like, they just seem a bit uncoordinated, to be fair. Like, in fact, nothing to say. I thought he might have gone for an X attempt, but he, he does leave it. But is this a problem for RNG? A uh, little bit, yeah. I mean, has he abandoned going for even the Manta style on the TB? Because that's a worry. He's just worried about being able to survive if he's forced to team fight, And I mean, he will sooner rather than later with this uh, BK, sorry, with the Battle Fury pickup on Scylar. I always get a little bit triggered about people holding like a magic stick and an iron branch. Just finish the wand, man. I know you're a <laughs> carry, but it's only a little bit of money. It is sickening. Found out nothing to say. I think he was shadow bladed underneath the sentry ward, but he's not the main target that they're going to try and go for. It's like nothing to say. We'll have his own uh, own BKB up pretty soon as well. It's gonna be very nice for him. And they are starting to rotate down bot. Flywin seems to know they're there. He's got his shield up just at the staircase. Instead, Faith Beyond says, "Oh, I see a bane." Primal roar. There it is. No need to hold back. And they even put the ink swell on. Why? Just really wanting to secure the kill. There's nothing to say. Gonna find Flywin. Nice, the glyph. Yeah, boat gonna fly in. And this is not great news. If you are RNG, you are losing all your cores and getting absolutely zero return. And now you've lost the tier 2 tower. Yeah, some pressure being put up on this top side. The thing is, we haven't seen any big team fights with this uh, 5v5 setup. No supernova. Arena has been used defensively once, I think. And uh, other than that, not really all that much. And especially when you've got an aggressive style mid laner like Setsu. That's really surprising to see. This is something I'm, I'm very used to seeing, though, I've got to say, from E-Home, where they just, they just rotate around their Beastmaster, like... Faith Beyond hits 6 or 7, they start rotating as a team and just start finding pickoffs one by one. And uh, this is just classic E-Home right now. Like, RNG, I, I don't know if they're just going to play the farming game and just wait it out. It just seems like they're not, they don't have an answer to what E-Home's throwing at them. Too true, and they're definitely going for this early game timing, both with their draft, with their item builds, going into the pipe now on Faith Beyond, going to be good value against both the Void Spirit and the Phoenix. And then uh, an early BKB pickup coming soon for the Kunkka. Flywin has like constantly got his shield up as he walks forward through the lane. He's just so scared of getting getting ganked again. I suppose you've got to be careful. Oh, e -home. They're starting to rotate up top. They've got Primal Roar once again. They're not going to find anybody. About 400 gold away from this BKB on nothing to say. He's definitely going to want to try and finish that up. Hit the timing to be able to contest the 20 minute bounty runes and then hopefully take some more key objectives after that point. I'm afraid this may trigger you, but uh, Monet is deciding... not holding he's... it? <laughs> he's got a Sergeant Yasha going, it seems like, Monet. He's got a BKB. Do you think the Sergeant Yasha is the right play here? Like... You said the Manta was 
the way to go. He opts to change it up and go for Assange now. It's alright. I think status resistance against this style of team is very important. Uh, they've got a ton of stuns, they've got a ton of lockdown. You just want to be able to minimize that as much as you can so that you can get off your BKB. That's fair. Yeah, they're definitely going to have to transition into more of a, a team fight style build as opposed to farming away. If you go S and Y, you need to clash. Can they though is the, uh, is the question I have. Like, maybe soon. They are rotating around through the dire jungle. They running try. Yeah, they ran straight into Faith Beyond's units. So, last Deal bit of gold them. for them. Taken but. back this uh, outpost. Very important. But there's a smoke. E home. Sinkui gets a double chains off of Faith Beyond. Roars the Terra Blade immediately, and now nothing to say. With the boat flying in, still the BKB paying off dividends for Monet, but they have already found the Bane. But he will buy back immediately, and now why? He does also go down. Arena oh, no. catches nothing, and Setsu goes down on the Void Spirit. And Silent now, he's going to move in. He still has Battle Found Trance, but he has been Fiend's gripped up still. Oh. He gets it off in time. Now Flywind goes down. They also lost Monet. They're going to lose every single person. It's RNG buyback. Setsu, no. Oh, no. That's a dieback on Setsu. Just desperately trying to get anything out of that with the uh, Troll Warlord eventually getting his ulti off. What team play. He would have been spamming his Arky <laughs> just trying <laughs> to say, please, 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 they've committed everything onto me. And uh, yeah, as you said, that Arena of Blood popped onto nothing. They were trying to catch out the Conker who'd Shadow Bladed away, but he still had a couple of seconds left on his uh, his BKB, so able to just shrug it off and walk away. He had the haste as well, so he was able to rejoin the team fight straight after. Well, they find a tier 2 mid. They back just off. Just go straight up to this uh, top tier 1 tower now. You've got the... Glyph with about 40 seconds left, so by the time you take it, it would have been just about to refresh. Maximum value. E-Home playing RNG like a fiddle right now. 13k net worth lead. And, well, the win probability is already very high for E-Home. 93% their way, apparently. It's uh, pretty high considering the timing of the game. But, uh, th I mean, the way it's going, like, it, even with that 10 second BKB charge on Monet, it just didn't matter. He just couldn't. The only, the only way I can see this potentially coming back for RNG is if they contest this Roshan right now, and doesn't look like they're keen to. That's what I was thinking. Maybe the Void Spirit was trying to do with diving in super deep for that troll because it takes away that ability. Because they took the fight right out of right outside of Rosh Pit. Oh, Setsu. So, yeah. Silent stop. They have Roar, I believe. Faith, where are you? He's looping around. Faith knew. He, can he get it off in time? No. Astral Step will be there. But now Aegis is up on E-Home. They should be able to claim the T2 and T1 tower. Suddenly, Sila has a full Sergeant Yasha himself. And, uh... It, it gets really rough now. Like, the push potential from E-Home is way too high. What? They okay, they got Sin Q, but we can't forget. He's a position 4 Ember. Yeah. And they use the Fiend's Grip. Two oh. ultimates to kill a position 4. Yeah, that's not, that's not optimal. I don't think so. I mean, how are any of these cores going to die on E-Home's side? On the Beastmaster, you've got great armor from your Medallion of Courage. You've got a pipe for yourself, Kunkka, tons of magic resist, and an invis. And then the troll, of course, Aegis. And you can just pop your ultimate. And You're not they, worried at all. They run into Monet. Monet, reflections up. Silence, Torrent, gonna connect. Grimstroke might be in a bit of trouble, but do you care? Probably not. I'm kind of shocked, though, that Ehome didn't really capitalize uh, off those ultimates being down. Like, Arena of Blood's now back up, and Fiend's Grip, it still has a minute, but I doubt Ehome gets there in time to really start the next team fight. I think that's how you nerf Mars. You just gotta increase his Arena of Blood cooldown a little bit. That's fair. It is, it is a very low cooldown. 75 seconds at level 2. A minute at level 3. Doesn't seem very fair. I think if it was just 90 seconds at all levels, I think that'd be fine. Yeah, sounds good. Sila looks like he's going for a full Satanic now 
on the troll, and his farm certainly hasn't slowed down. He's currently right second net worth. Oh, mid lane. Arena of Blood's there. Nothing to say. Has BKB and up Faith Beyond. He's falling very low and does drop. It's a big kill for the side of RNG. Can they find any more? Drums pop by Sin Q. And it looks like Sin Q's trying to bait them in a little bit, but. No, E Home, they will disperse, and that'll be enough with their. Uh, with Faith Beyond down, they don't want to risk anything. Eventually did take down one, but we saw it cost the uh, nine second BKB. It cost the Ooh. Metamorphosis, although Sila has Aegis. It's a big, uh, big take though. Egg going to be popped immediately. He's got to pop that Battle Trance if he wants to survive this though. No, they go after the Egg, but the Fiend's Rip comes out just in the nick of time. And he does go down. The Egg survives and nothing to say now. Going to be chased down. Flywin gets a very, very nice uh, God's Rebuke. And Y should burn out here along with nothing to say. That is a lot of golden XP going the way of RNG. Surely they can't throw that away. <laughs> Surely. It's still an 11k net worth lead, so it's not like it's the easiest uh, turnaround for them, but... Man, 6.5k experience going the way of RNG. Brings them back into the game, at least in a small manner. It's just a real shame. He They're looking to keep it up. Why not? Faith Beyond, he just respawned. He gets speared up to the arena. And uh, he pipes, but I don't think that's going to... Oh, no. He primal roars as well. Oh, what a mess. Ehome, what have you done? This is not ideal. They've still got 50 seconds left on the Metamorphosis. That's their one saving grace. But you're probably going to be losing Elena Rax because of this. That's a, a huge win from RNG considering what the position they were in about five minutes ago. Like, even two minutes ago. Yeah. Yeah, Soulbind comes out. Sure, does nothing. They'll just walk away together. Shiva's finished up by this Phoenix. Finish your one, damn it. It's just the recipe. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that win probability now, Danog. Just all the way up. My god. I, I mean, I can't believe that just happened. It, it's just crazy to me. Just getting a little too confident, I suppose. Uh, with this Beast Mastery, he's been about 300 gold away from his ultimate orb to finish up that Solar Crest for a long time, which would have done a lot to be able to save him. It gives him that three extra armor, it gives him a bunch of stats. Sala. They're going to Flywin. Flywin does go for the TP. Sala, he does not get lucky. No one snares. And meanwhile, top lane, what's going on there? They have found Sin Q. That'll set up for the top tier 2 tower now. And Well, RNG, this will be the final outer tower coming down for E-Home. is getting very close to picking up a full eye of Skadi. You've got the Ags up now in Setsu. The net worth lead's only sitting at 5k for E-Home all of a sudden. And man, oh man, why I just... What a way to turn this game around. My god, E-Home. Uh, they get it's not, the game's not over by any stretch of the imagination, but it's just become so much harder. It has. I wonder w the neutral item situation on RNG is a little weird. They're using the Grove Bow on this Void Spirit, which I'm not seeing the benefit. You're not a hero that just goes ahead and right clicks. You know, uh, having something like the Aquila on him might be alright. Same with the Mars or just the Pupil's Gift as well. Maybe the Magic Resist. They do take down Y. Setsu, gonna go ahead and take back the outpost. How close are we to that Skadi now? Oh, he's got it. Smanae's bringing it out on the courier right now. With that Skadi up, this became even harder. I was uh, mistaken before, by the way. There is still one outer tower for E-Home. It is the bot tier 2. And they are going to go ahead and try and claim it now. Well, now it's given RNG their time. They've got a few of their key timings up now. BKB approaching very, very shortly for Flywinds. So he won't need to just hold up his shield anymore. He'll be able to be a fighting force and the TB 
so close to that level 20 as well. Titan Sliver finished up for him. He's got the uh, status resistance from that, in addition to the Sanjin Yasha, so he's able to tank up a lot of this beef that's coming his way. Yeah, that's, a, that's a real problem for Ehome. The uh, RNG, they smoke up. They know they've got this advantage right now. Setsu gonna go back and defend that bottom tier or that top tier three tower. And the rest of Ehome immediately TP back to base. None of them stick around. Uh, definitely the smarter play. There's no Roshan anyway, so RNG can't exactly capitalize on that. Now a counter smoke. Though, they, they only got two in the smoke. I think this is just for warding purposes. They've got the Satanic finished up on this Troll Warlord, so... That's a lot of status resisted when you combine it together with the SNY. And Lifesteal. It is. Oh, nothing to say. He's gonna sneakily take himself an Arcane Rune. Setsu's looking towards him, though. Faith Beyond is there nearby if necessary, and... Oh, Setsu, getting caught out of the Void Spirit. Yules is going to be there. The Troll does get caught. In fact, never mind. The Aether Remnant is blocked by the Boar. Now the Soulbind comes out. Silas starts moving forward, but an immediate Spear. Inkswell won't really land on anything, though Setsu does die. Now the Roar comes out onto the Mars. Can fly when survive? He definitely can, especially if that egg's going, and now he just blocks all that damage from Sila with his shield. Now the meta, Manet, right clicking them to death. Sila, he does go down. Fly when s still alive somehow. And now he Ehome needs to run. Satanic on the troll. Oh no. Didn't even use his wand. Yeah, that's. That's not right. Fly when. They get September at least, but. Sin does manage to remnant away. There is an attack following, but he barely survives. Still, Manet willing to team fight. He's got the Sunder. Ehome, they have won. Ship. They have won this team fight on the side of Ehome, but they've got to be a little bit in. careful. Boat, this could be it for Manet. He may have overstayed his welcome, and he does go down. Nothing to say. Does clean him up, and now the drum has popped. They want to go after Flywin. He's the last one for a full team wipe from Ehome, and they are going to pick it up. What is this game, Dano? Uh, it's confusing, I'll say that much. And, uh, well, when you can go up position 4 Ember Spirit and get away with going something like the, uh, the Maelstrom, he's carrying a lot of Minus Armor through the Orb of Destruction and the Blightstone, and doing the third most damage in that entire team fight, that's some serious value right there. It is. Like, it would have been, like, 0.1 of a second where they had, uh, the Grimstroke ulti, and then they finally got the double roar off as well to be able to pick off the, uh, was it Mars that got KO'd yes. at the start of that team fight? No, no, no. Mar Mars survived pretty much the whole time. Uh, it was set to on the Void Spirit. That magic resist from the Grove Bow, not enough to be able to no. save him. Certainly not. Hmm. So, Faith Beyond, and this surprised me a little bit, goes for the uh, plus 75 wild axes damage at level 20. Kind of good up, up against a TB for, <clears throat> for the illusions, and I guess it's magical now. But giving up the 500 HP? It's a bit. I suppose just having a faith in the rest of his team, he's kind of tanky enough with the Solar Crest finished. He's sitting on 3,200 gold, though. So, he is. Uh, oh, they found Manet. He does, oh, he does have mana. He'll pop it with his BKB. Sala just man-fighting. He doesn't care. He has Satanic. He has Battle Trance. They go on the back lines. What an arena coming out with the Egg. But the Egg will drop straight away. Sinku's lost his life as well, but who cares? Setsu, he's been stunned up, but they can't finish the job because of that arena. Though, no, he doesn't have actual step. He needs to run the hard way. In fact, never mind. He does have the step now. He just doesn't choose to use it. Instead, they'll go on Bane, but nothing to say. is falling very low, so he, uh, I believe, cheeses up. Sink you now. Back in the team fight, Asal does finally pop the battle trance. But he's used up. Satanic on cooldown. 
Speed doesn't actually latch onto a tree, so he is still able to run back up to the cliff and try and fight this Asetsu now. Still going, still very low, but he doesn't mind. Meanwhile, Sila going on to Mane, who's just trying to run away with that Glimmer Cape right now. They are going to lose Fly when on the Mars, and a nice X coming out from nothing to say. They clean up Mane as well. Both cores without buybacks. Yeah, they take out the full lane of racks, but... I don't know if it's a TB going down for that. I suppose you're slowly starting to tick down on the BKBs, but likewise on the TB as well. His is running very, very low, and you're just enabling this position for Ember Spirit to start to become even more of a factor for his team. It just feels like some heroes are doing stuff, some heroes aren't, and uh, as much as I love Setsu as a player, it just feels like a non-factor from the very beginning of this game. I, I'd have to agree. Sila, gonna go after the tier 3 top tower. Still holds the Aegis, by the way. It's a lot of damage with Astral Step. Sila, he could probably just reset. In fact, they found an X over on the Bane. Boats are flying. It all connects. Aether, I'm not gonna be there. Sila, he'll be fine. He'll take the kill. That's Throw him on the front lines again. He's nearly level 25, forcing the buyback out of the Bane. They're still gonna lose the tower. Still lose the racks, they've still got ages. You got Charles two and a half gonna, minutes. Just gonna take it. Can you go for another one? He used Satanic. I mean, there's so. no way he's gonna die without the TB and the Mars there, so why not? Okay. Just backs out, and that'll be it. They find themselves a rack, so it's a one for one in terms of racks now, and nothing to say suddenly has a sight the vice up. That's big. That's, uh, that's pretty spicy. Hmm. Setsu. Born out by Sin Q. Chains are there. Can they reach Setsu in time to get the X off? Nothing to say. He couldn't quite get there. Sin Q will continue the chase. Remnant's perfect. Aether Remnant does connect and now dissimilate to get away, but no. They got the X and Setsu, he has been caught out another time. And you know what? It didn't really take many hits from Sile to, to really finish him off. Yeah, they was just like, oh, please focus on me. Let Monet get his next item, but still a little bit away before that Daedalus and got this aggressive lineup on E-Home that doesn't need to wait. Still got a minute and a half as well on this Aegis, so they're going to be keen to make something happen right now. It's a 6v4, essentially. Butterfly up on Scylla. Level 25 has the strong dispel from the Battle Trance. Oh, it's very nice. Sila. Still that with the soul Aegis. crest is so nice. It just lets him ramp up his damage so much quicker. Repair kit doesn't matter. Sila just hits way too fast, way too hard. And again, uses Satanic just to heal up back to full HP. Uh, all right, Roshan timing, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that, Mane. We weren't aware. Sila, nightmare will be taken off, and that'll be the secondary racks. In fact, they make it. They still have time for the third. Yeah, oh, that's Solar Crest. It's enabling it. You've got the Beastmaster standing near you as well, so that inner beast aura just means it hits like a truck. Nice repair kit. Doesn't last. And that'll be Mega Creeps coming out from E-Home. RNG just can't stop it. They nightmare the troll. This could be the final team fight. Faith, he's looking for the double roar right now. He might find it, and he does. They do take down Super. Mane trying to man fight Sila. Meanwhile, Flywin keeping everyone else at bay, and there are boats flying out from the back lines. S Setsu, I believe, he does find Y. Now the egg comes out. Sila attacking away. Still with Battle Transfer. Nice spear coming out from Flywin. Still, he holds the Aegis. He's not really Five afraid. Seconds. He wants to keep going. Five seconds away, Sila. He pops the Battle Trance. And that's the GG being called as the team is getting wiped and have a look at that win probability Dan I'll just up and down it's been all over the place and E-Home they have the game they throw the game but they take back the game balanced as all things should be <laughs> it's like oh, a what? trigonometry session happening there with the, uh, the win probability graph like a sine graph or something like that it's insane Still, that'll be uh, that'll be game one of this best of three. Ehome showing up for now. RNG, where did they go wrong? Was it a drafting problem? Was it? You mentioned Setsu wasn't really getting anything done. Like he had no impact. But uh, I think it shows the value of uh, being able to go for that 
uh, having that last pick conquer. You know, they were able to turn it around on him. So even though it was uh, Setsu winning the best of one, uh, sorry, the 1v1 matchup and choosing that first pick, Ihoma like, well, we'll just counter you then. <laughs> you know, it's a uh, good job with your Mars. We'll just uh, have the better mid matchup. And it seems like that's what they value. I wonder if that's the way they're going to go into it in this game number two, whether they stick with second pick or if they're going to go for first. We're going to find out very soon. It is MLP Dota and Danog Dota. We'll be back in hopefully just a few moments for game number two.